When we add values to our XVA graph relationships, we get quantitative graphs. Now these are going to be quantitative graphs that describe speeding up, slowing down, and other motion. All of our XVA graph relationships are based around this XVA mountain. As you climb that mountain from A to V to X, you use the area. This is why the area underneath a velocity versus time graph gives us our displacement. As you go down the slope, as you go down that mountain from X to V to A, you use the slope as you would on a mountain. Because you can take the slope of a velocity versus time graph to get its acceleration, you can take the area under the curve to get its displacement or just interpolate or read the points, it makes the velocity versus time graph kind of king of the mountain. It can tell you the most information. So let's look at a few velocity versus time graphs. Even though this is a quantitative problem, we want to think qualitatively. This object is moving forward because it's above the graph and it's speeding up because it's going from close to far. Its velocity is increasing. If I wanted to find the velocity at different time periods, I can just read the graph. This is called interpolating. So at one second, I see that my object is traveling one meter per second. That's not its position, that's its current velocity. At three seconds, it's traveling at three meters per second. I'm just reading the points. It's like playing a uh, battleship. At six seconds, it's traveling at six meters per second. That's how I would tell or read the velocity of an object on a velocity versus time graph. If I want to find the displacement under this same velocity versus time graph, I can take the area. I see a triangle. So I use the area of a triangle formula. This motion traveled for six seconds, so my base is six. I traveled from zero to six meters per second, so my height in this case is six as well. I substitute in and evaluate. Now it's not just 18, it's 18 meters, because I'm solving for meters, is, which is the variable for displacement. I can also see that unit by taking meters per second times seconds. The seconds cancel out to give me 18 meters. I can also find the acceleration. If I want to find acceleration starting in the middle of XVA, I need to go down the mountain. I need to take the slope. So I'm going to find that slope. I'm going to write out two pairs or two ordered pairs, label them up X1, Y1, X2, Y2. It helps when you write out your equation then because you can substitute in each little piece. Be very careful with positives and negatives. Be careful simplifying the top and bottom so that way you can just divide to get one meter per second squared in this case, which makes sense. I see a positive slope. I should have a positive acceleration. Let's go back to the beginning and try it all again. Here's a new velocity versus time graph. Now I'm below the graph, so I'm going backwards. I'm going from fast to slow. I'm approaching the stoplight. So I'm backwards, slowing down. Keep that in mind as you do all of these calculations. All of these answers should appear reasonable. So I'm going to find the velocity at each one of these particular time points. At zero seconds, I'm traveling at negative four meters per second. That negative just tells me I'm going backwards. I'm actually going my fastest at this point. At three seconds, I'm going to be traveling at negative two meters per second. So I'm still negative. I'm still backwards. Now I'm traveling two meters per second less than I was a couple seconds ago. Now I'm coming to a stop. I hit the lines so at zero meters per second at six seconds. The object traveled from four to two to zero meters per second, and it was negative. So it was backwards the whole time. If we take this over, say, take the same motion and calculate the displacement, displacement from a velocity versus time graph, I got to climb the mountain, I need to use area. That's a triangle, so I'm going to use the area triangle formula. Substitute in what you know. Now be careful with your base and the height every time. Look at the scaling. It's six for my base because the motion traveled for six seconds. But my height is negative four. It's four below that x-axis because I was going backwards. Direction matters. So I'm going to calculate if I traveled backwards at a backwards velocity, it's reasonable that I would have a negative displacement, a backwards displacement. I ended up behind where I started. 
if I have that same motion and I want to find its acceleration, I'm going down the mountain from V to A, so I take the slope. Start by picking two ordered pairs. Watch those negatives when you're writing out your ordered pairs. Label them X1, Y1, X2, Y2. We're learning the process, not just a right answer. So embark on the process, on the journey. We're going to write out our formula. That makes it easy to substitute everything in. We have our ingredients. We have our recipe. Bake a cake. Make sure you're double-checking things like minus negative 4 actually equals positive 4. You might catch that error when you check your answer at the end. I see a positive slope, so I should end up with a positive slope. If I make a small mistake with my negatives and ended up with a negative acceleration, it would be a good red flag to go back and double check your work. And that right there is why you show your work. It's a running record of every step you've taken. So probably every mistake you've made is there. So we're going to go forward into a new set of motions. So here I see two different motions on a position or sorry, on a velocity versus time graph. I see that we're going forward in both because we're above in both. I see that I'm speeding up and then I'm moving at a constant velocity. So I'm going to see that my first velocity at one second, I'm at two meters per second. I'm just reading it. If I'm reading the velocity versus time graph, I'm interpolating to get the velocity. At two seconds, I'm at four meters per second. At six seconds, I'm still at four meters per second because for that second motion, you are moving with a forward constant velocity. That confirms the two motions. Between one and two seconds, I confirmed that I was speeding up. Between the second two times, I can see that I did not change velocity. I'm going to take the same motion and find displacement. I see two motions, so I also see two shapes. I'm going to look at zero to two seconds and find what my displacement was. Here, I'm climbing the mountain up to X from V, so I need to take the area underneath. There's the triangle, one-half base times height. Be careful. Watch your, your uh, scaling. That base is two. That height is four, one-half times two gives me one times four gives me a displacement of positive four meters. I'm going forward. I should have a positive displacement. Always double check. That's what we mean by make sure your answer is reasonable and realistic. Then I see a second motion from two to six seconds. Be careful. That motion starts at two seconds, ends at six seconds. It doesn't start at zero and end at six. That becomes important when you look at that rectangular shape. My base is four, not six. There was a whole other motion before that. So six minus two gave me my base of four. I'm traveling positive four meters per second the whole time. That gives me a displacement of positive 16 meters. It's logical and reasonable that we have a positive displacement because we traveled in a positive direction at a constant uh, velocity. It also makes sense that we traveled further because here we are traveling faster the whole time and for a longer amount of time than that first motion. We can also find the acceleration for each of these motions. But again, you need to treat each motion separately. We know that if I want to find acceleration, I need to go from V to A. So I'm going down the mountain. I'm going down the slope. So I'm going to use the slope, pick two points, write out your formula, take the time to substitute in correctly. Make sure that you're watching signs the whole time. At the very end, check that your answer is reasonable. I ended up with a positive acceleration because I had a positive slope for the red motion. If I ended up with a negative acceleration, it means I probably made a mistake. So I need to go check my work before I finalize my answer. I can find the acceleration of the other one if you really need to. If you know your graph shapes, you already have that number rattling around. But I can double check it. I'm going to give it two points, an x1, a y1, an x2, a y2. Write out the formula, substitute in, plug and chug, zero divided by Anything and everything is zero. So I'm not changing velocities, and this goes back to our constant velocity days, so I don't have acceleration. It's possible to have multiple motions in a row like this that have acceleration and don't have acceleration. That's like speeding up, slowing down, and moving at a constant velocity on the highway. You use all motions driving in a car.